There we go. Now it's recording. <clears throat> okay, so let me adjust this line here. I think instead of doing a spline, I will do a little bit nicer. I will do a line here, and I will do a curved segment. This should play a little bit nicer. Now if I hit finish sketch, go to sweep, I will select my profile, I will select my path. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. Let me... Let me move that to the origin. I'll finish the sketch. So now, hopefully, this will extrude sweep better. So, all right, let me <clears throat> select my profile again. Let me select my path. There we go. Now, now it's better. I guess it doesn't appreciate having the uh, profile being away from your center line. So, okay, now we got ourselves like a candy cane shape. Um, since I'm here, I'm going to try using the spline again. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. So now if I hit, hit finish sketch, go to my sweep tool. This time I'm going to select my profile and I'm going to select my path. There we go, okay. So it just didn't like it um, not being on the center line. That's why it was giving me errors. Okay, well that makes more sense. And Ooh, almost had to sneeze. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so my orientation, so if I click on my view, you'll notice it's trying to keep the profile, um, f for the most part, horizontal with the original profile here, so it's just sweeping out all of the... Oh, come on. There we go. Um, it doesn't quite stay horizontal up here, but it's, for the most part, trying to keep these perpendicular with the line. I can change that to be parallel. Um, or, oh, I'm sorry, I had my <clears throat> descriptions flipped. Right now it's trying to keep the profile completely parallel. When I go to perpendicular, then every point along this line here that I've, that I've made is going to try to be a circle, as best as it can be. Okay. And now, I am going to close out of this, go into, I'll show you the Revolve tool next. Revolve tool is always good to know. Um, so I'll adjust my view, again this is with my home button here, um, right up next to the view cube, and I will... I'll sketch. <laughs> I'll sketch on this plane. <clears throat> no reason why, but if I want to make a random shape, I'll you know make a circle. I'll use my sketch dimension tool. I will. Let's make this thirty. Now it's not fully, fully constrained because it doesn't know where to be. If I, you know put it on the origin, then it would fully constrain itself. But um, for what I am doing, I'm going to make a rectangle going from the origin to the center point of my circle. I'll do 30 there, and I don't know. 30 there, why not? <clears throat> Now I'm going to hit finish sketch. So now I've got my two random sketches. And actually, since I'm here, I'll also show you the snip tool, or the, sorry, the trim tool. 
I can, if I click and drag, I can, I can either click or I can click and drag and it will cut lines. Now it's giving me a warning here because I've removed some of the dimensions that I had originally um, set up with those lines that I deleted. So now if you <clears throat> look here, now they're no longer the 30 millimeters that I had originally wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this point and uh, actually, sorry, I'm gonna unselect that. I'm gonna go back to my sketch dimension tool and select that point there. <clears throat> and now I need to figure out why. Okay, so What I can do here is I could actually make a construction line. So here's my construction line. Go ahead and click there. And actually, it automatically automatically constrained it for me because it detected that I wanted these to be these two lines to be perpendicular. So perfect. So now everything's fully constrained. Now let me show you a different perspective of it. Go down to my uh, revolve tool. It's in this drop down menu on create, or it's also here on the main menu. So I've got my profile selected. It'll automatically select it since it's the um, only profile. And then for the axis, I need to select something and I can either select this line here or the origin, kind of hard to see from my screen here, but I can select this Z axis right here. So if I select that, kind of gives me a weird donut mushroom looking shape. Um, <clears throat> I can change the angle here. Maybe I only want it to be 180 degrees. So now it's only rotated 180, and it's also has, it also has a slider that I can slide around. Um, I can do one side, I can do symmetric. So symmetric is now rotating both sides. Um, I can do two sides where one side doesn't necessarily go the same amount as the other. So lots of different options here. If we go back, so let me undo some of these. So now I have my original shape where I had three different profiles. If I go ahead and hit finish sketch and go back into Re Revolve, it won't automatically select my shape for me. I'm going to have to um, select which features I want to revolve. And so, I don't know, I feel like just revolving this one for now. So now I'll select, and I don't know, I'll, I'll select this face actually. And so now you can see I've rotated a, like a bowl type of shape. Um, you know, if I select this face over here, now I've got like the inverse, like this could be like a a cutter, a cutter head to some, you know, router or something that I wanted to cut circular shapes along metal or wood or whatever. Um, okay, so let's move on to, so we, we kind of did the weird funky ones first. We did the sweep and revolve. Well, let's just go to our handy dandy extrude. That's our most basic <clears throat> tool for making 3D geometry. That's that's always super, super helpful. Um, oops, that's not what I want. I wanted the extrude button. Um, so I can go ahead and click on this and, you know, click and drag in either direction, which is kind of nice. I can select different profiles. So now I'm extruding a square. You know, now I'm extruding a, everything but that 
semicircle arc piece. Or, you know, maybe I just want the little pie, shape of the pie, Pac-Man dude. Um, I can change from one side to two sides. So now I can asymmetrically extrude my stuff. Now, if I do symmetric, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, okay, and oh, also, um, just for ease of measurement, you see right now it's at 200 and, uh, or sorry, uh, 25 millimeters. If I wanted the entire length, this is only if you're doing symmetric. If you wanted the entire length to be 25, then you don't have to do the math. Um, so that's also something worth knowing. Um, okay, so I will go ahead and hit okay on this. If I wanted to make another sketch, uh, or sorry, another extrusion using the same sketch, I can go over in my little sketch tree here. Got to drop down the sketch and then this little eyeball, click on it. And now, ta-da, now I've got my sketch back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this piece. And um, this time, instead of a distance, I'm going to do two object. And I'm going to click on the end of my line or of my cylinder here and it's going to automatically extend it there um it's all oh um you can offset this so if i wanted to let's say i wanted an ins offset of 10 now it's going to be 10 millimeters from the end of this face i can also do negative 10 and now it's 10 millimeters away from the face in the opposite direction. Um, I don't know. I'll do two. Kind of looks cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, I can also taper this. Tapering basically means adding an angle to the uh, extrusion that I'm doing. Let's try, I don't know, five for now. Uh, oh, and it's actually turned into a cut operation now because it's it's saying, oh, I gotta go into the into the material here and I'm gonna cut this much off. Well, if I don't want it to cut, I can always change it to join. And so now I've got this weird, you know, slightly trapezoidal object joined up with my other shape. And you know, maybe I want it to be a little bit more extreme. Maybe I want 15 degrees, just to really show you what's going on. And I can hit OK, and now everything's all joined up. I'll go ahead and hide my sketch again, so now sketch has disappeared. Um, if I decide maybe instead of join, I actually do want to cut. Ta-da! Now I've got this interesting shape here. Kind of reminds me of a piece of equipment I used to work with at the uh, paper mill that I used to work at. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we've done the extrusion. Let me do just one more extrusion. So I'll go ahead and show my sketch again just for the sake of recycling. Um, I'll drag it over here. So distance, one side, symmetric and all that. Um, if I wanted to, actually here, let me, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna need to make a new sketch for this. If I wanted to, so I'll just make a sketch right on the end of my cylinder right here. Just click on the top of that use my center diameter circle and I can kind of snap right in the middle of that circle there. Um, is it going to, yeah, it is actually going to keep it concentric, which is nice. So I'll use my sketch dimension tool to give it a 
dimension. I'll do, hmm, I don't know, 20, maybe 25. 25 might be too much. No, I'll do 25. That looks good. Um, now I am going to go into my extrude tool. And I can go and extrude through the whole thing if I wanted to. So I could do distance and I'll do all. And so now it just automatically knows, boop, I'm going to cut through this whole thing. Um, if I didn't want to do that, I can show you now a two object. Maybe I just want it down to the floor here and I want to keep my floor intact. So now I can hit OK. So now I've got like a kind of like a whistle looking thing here. Um, different options for the extrude tool. If I wanted here, I can show you the offset tool again. I would like the offset to be five millimeters. I'll hit OK. So now I've offset it from the ground ever so slightly. OK. Let me double check if I'm not missing anything. Um, oh, intersect. Let's see here. Intersect does, eh, I guess it could work for this. Let me, hmm. let me do distance to object. I will click on the face there. So now I'm actually just saving the core that I would have cut out instead of um, the rest of my body. So uh, another option there. A little bit uh, more confusing to work with, but you definitely could draw your, um, model your models in a, in a specific way that that could be a very useful tool to use. Um, all right. I think we've touched on the extrude tool enough. I think that should be, here's, if you want to look at the little descriptor there, there's the little descriptor for you guys. You can pause the video if you want. Um, all right, so I'll show you what the fillet is. Fillet, people jokingly call it a fillet. Basically just makes a rounded edge, a rounded corner there. And now under modify, right under fillet, you got chamfer. Difference between fillet and chamfer is the uh, chamfer is a straight edge. The fillet is a, sorry, a straight corner. Fillet is a curved corner. Let me show you a outer profile. So. Now you can see it's a straight cut through the corner rather than a curved cut through the corner. So again, this is fillet, this is chamfer. All right, um, so we've made our weird funky shape. Um, let me check where the origin is here. So we actually made this away from the origin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch, this time on this plane, which is not touching this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a circle. I'm not going to put it anywhere in particular. I just want to show you that this is an option. Um, I'm going to go into my... I can either hit finish sketch to just, you know, close out this sketch, or um, if I go into solid, and just click on extrude, it will automatically finish sketch for me. Um, now I can pull this, and so you'll notice it thinks, it, it'll auto predict what it thinks you want. So right now it's going to just make a solid piece of, um, you know, whatever this is. But as soon as I have it intersect with the part that I'm making, it knows, oh, okay, well, maybe you actually want to cut it. And you know, if that's what you want, great. But you can always change the operation to join 
or intersect and just keep those plugs if you want. Um, I'll do cut. And now, let's see here. I'm actually going to redo my cut. So there, it looks like everything's good. It's going through everything, no problem. Everything should be fine. Well, now all of a sudden upper management calls and says, uh, just kidding, we need this to be 40 millimeters now instead of 30. Uh-oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and update my sketch, you know, easy peasy. Well, shoot, that didn't work. Now my um, <clears throat> hole doesn't go all the way through. So, you know, if I am able to catch the error, sure, I can, you know, click and drag, everything's fine. Or if I was smart, I would have done two object. Sorry, doesn't always like. There we go. You have to change your solution. So the minimum solution or max solution. It didn't like the minimum solution because it was trying to cut nothing. And so it's like, uh, we didn't find anything, sorry. So go to the max solution. And so now it automatically knows it's always got to be here. So now if I change this yet again to 50 and hit finish sketch, now I don't have to go through and update anything. Now it's automatically good. Uh, also, you can do all. All is fine. But if I, let's see here, if I go to my sketch, uh, <laughs> if I make an extrusion here, so far so good. And this is where history comes into play. If I make the extrusion here, everything's fine. If I change the uh, point in time of my history, now all of a sudden, here, let me get rid of this sketch. Now all of a sudden I've cut through here. So this is what happens when you change history. Things can become maybe not what you quite intended them to be, which is why um, you have to be careful with the cut all, and I guess technically this would have happened with the using the um, two feature on our cut as well. But um, I usually just default to using the two object just because I, f I feel like it gives me more precision and I know what is going to get cut versus what is not. Um, either way works. I've definitely used the all plenty of times. Um, okay. I'm going to stop the video there just so that I see if I'm actually doing this correctly.